our researchers focus on the neotropics. There are about 40 glossophagine bat species, which are highly adapted nectar feeding bats. And there are several hundred species of plants which depend on this glossophagine bats for pollination. And the bats use echolocation to find these flowers. And these plants um, show some special features like flowering on long bedankles, as you can see here at this cacti flower, or they offer quite large amounts of nectar. And to attract the pollinators, they exude a special odor, like we know it also from other flowers pollinated by insects, for example. But the very special thing about bad pollinated flowers is that they also evolved echoacoustic adaptations to lure their echolocating pollinators. We started to train bats to learn hollow forms like triple mirrors, cones, uh, hemispheres, paraboloids. And uh, what we recognized was that the best and easiest form to learn for the bats were hollow hemispheres. Therefore, we were totally amazed when we went to Cuba and found there the uh, inflorescences of Magravia venia with this huge dish-shaped spherical formed leaves above the inflorescences and um, during that time we observed bat there they were licking the nectar out of the uh, nectar cups this inflorescent provides and uh, we spontaneously thought this must be an echo signal and um, yeah we went to the lab and measured the echoes and saw that the echo is really special and reminiscent to the echo of hollow hemispheres. As it wasn't possible to conduct a behavioral experiment in the field uh, because it's a very rare species and uh, the inflorescent senses are often high above in the canopy of the rainforest, uh, we made a behavioral experiment with captive bats in uh, in, in the lab and uh, we trained the bats to interact with a computer-controlled artificial environment. Though the bats were usually kept in a keeping compartment and uh, from time to time they could trigger a to door to open and uh, then fly into an experimental compartment. And in this experimental compartment um, they had to search for a feeder at an artificial foliage background. and um, as the bats have a very, very good spatial memory, we have to change the position of this feeder in between each trial. And um, then we measured the time the bats needed to find the feeder. And what we found was that the feeder was found about 50% faster when it presented a dish-shaped leaf replica like this here. And we also made a control experiment and there the feeder presented such a foliage leaf replica, but this leaf did not influence search time at all. And this shows that the special form of the leaf can attract bats and help them to find the flowers faster.